<laughs> all right? I mean, you have to take time out. You remember right at the beginning, I said sometimes you have to have a little sense of humor and levity, okay? And you can't, and court can be fun sometimes. And of course, they acknowledge that in, in court, they acknowledge that uh, uh, they have to take a break once in a while because that's a long standing tradition to have a jester in the court. That's his job. No, I probably ought to. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. Well, let's see. What else have we got here? I want to see the powder wigs. Of course you do. Hey, he's hey, got some, hey! You got, got it. Of course. You wearing that? You must be an eagle. Okay. <laughs> there you are. Okay. So the, the magistrate. Now, have any of you ever wondered why the wigs are always white? You ever wondered? They run out of black. No, they're always white. Why, why, do, why is there a tradition of white wigs? Nope. Nope. <laughs> there was a period in time when the nobility <clears throat> had a lot of power struggles. Of course, there's always power struggles. I mean, that, that's guaranteed. But the power struggles got a little serious, <clears throat> and the customary way of settling power struggles was to incorporate arsenic. You know, you incorporate arsenic. Poison. Put a little arsenic in the food. Poison. What? Yeah. That usually settled up an argument about power. Okay? Whoever ate it first lost. <clears throat> so arsenic was very common. Alright? And that and that is how they settled. And it was brother against sister, father against son. I mean it, 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 there was no loyalty. You read the history. I've got a little book. I should have brought it in, I guess, but I have a little book on the history of Europe. And it, it's just a little book with maybe 100 pages, but every single page has at least three or four descriptions of somebody killing somebody in order to get in charge, <laughs> okay? I mean, it, this is how they did it. No loyalty among each other. They had nothing to do. They didn't work. You know, they, they, so they, they would kill each other in order. Well, and arsenic was the favorite method. Well, somebody discovered that if you eat a little bit of arsenic each day, you could build up your immunity, and you could take quite a hit with no effect. But the side effect was that your hair turned white. So all the nobility had white hair. And so it was very easy to tell the nobility, a nobleman, from a commoner. Commoner had colored hair. Nobility had white hair. Of course, that was why they ate arsenic. Okay? Well, when, when arsenic lost its favoritism and <laughs> no longer became popular, the tradition continued. And so when you have high court proceedings or very formal proceedings, they put on the white wigs. And that's why, because of the nobility. Oh, yeah. Well, they're, they're you know, I mean, look at the glorification of police now. When one of them dies, it's like a religious event, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And, and, and people seem to gravitate to that sort of thing. They like <coughs> glorifying. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. Superior court versus inferior court. You're going to love this. A superior court is a court of record. An inferior court is a court that's not an, a court of record. Okay? Right. Or the other way around. A court of record is a superior court. That's spelled with a small s. <clears throat> now, just to keep you confused, at least here in California, <clears throat> they named the courts superior court, but that's just the name. Okay? Don't confuse the name with the function. So, the superior court capitalized usually is an inferior court. How do you know? 
It's not a court of record. It's not proceeding according to the common law. The judge is making a decision. The tribunal is not independent of the magistrate. Those are the two big ones right there. Okay? So anytime you walk into a courtroom, you see that judge making a decision. I don't care if they call it the superior court. It's an inferior court. That's what I would do. Sure. Well, that, yeah, if you carry it out to the full formal extent, you would counterclaim them, but in a superior court, a real superior court. Okay? Now. Would that be an Article III court? No, Article III court is a court that's under the Constitution uh, of the United States. That Article III refers to the Article III of the United States Constitution. No, this is a court of record. Take it. Take it for what it is on its surface, on its face, okay? Don't try to make more out of it than what it is. So a court of record has its criteria. I gave you the criteria, and that's backed up by case law. I mean, there's been cases on that where that was challenged, and, and the court said, no, this is what a court of record is. So uh, the... Uh, but let's look at superior court versus inferior court. Okay. Now, in, in ex parte Kearney, 55 Cal 212, and in Smith versus Andrews in 6 Cal 652, the court said, inferior courts are those whose jurisdiction is limited and special and whose proceedings are not according to the course of the common law. Pretty clear to me. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Their jurisdiction is limited. Let me show you an example of what we mean by limited. Can, can a criminal court judge a civil matter? No. No. Can a civil court judge a criminal matter? No. Okay, these are limited jurisdiction courts. So therefore, they're inferior courts. When you go to court and you try to make an argument and the judge shuts you down because he says that's not related, okay, what is he doing? He's saying we're staying within the limitations of this court. See, like the guy, I, you, we've all heard about the case I'm sure, where the burglar came in through the roof and he fell yeah. and he got trapped in the garage and therefore he sued and won for damages because he couldn't get out of the garage. Okay? Now when you take the whole big picture, when you take the whole big picture into account, that doesn't make sense. Now I didn't, I didn't see this case, but I can imagine how it went. You know, the, 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 the burglar is suing the homeowner. The homeowner is saying, but you broke in. And the judge is saying, that has nothing to do with the case. <laughs> you cannot trap a person in a container. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the court had limited jurisdiction. The judge could not listen to anything else. He could only listen to the immediate things relating to this was he trapped or not trapped? Okay? Doesn't matter how he got there. Okay. Now, a court that has unlimited jurisdiction, which is a superior court, it can take these factors into account. Okay? It can take everything into account. It can take into whether the sun was up or down into account. Okay? So, that's the big one of the big differences between a superior court and an inferior court. Now, criminal courts proceed according to statutory law. Jurisdiction and procedure is defined by statute. Likewise, civil courts and admiralty courts proceed according to statutory law. Any court proceeding according to statutory law is not a court of record. Court of record only proceeds according to common law. It is an inferior court. Now, the only inherent difference ordinarily recognized between superior and inferior courts 
is that there is a presumption in favor of the validity of the judgments of the superior court and no presumption in favor of the validity of the inferior court.